Hello and welcome to The Bomb Filter, an experimental movie podcast designed with one thing in mind, to determine the worst movie ever made. We take bad movies and put them through a series of tests to decide just that. I'm your host, Chris Ackman. I'm joined by my co-host and fellow mad scientist, Rob Scucci. Hey, Rob, how are you and why are we doing this? I'm awful because I watch Street Fighter and we're doing this to talk about Street Fighter. Yeah. Um, I'm also awful because we watched Street Fighter. That was uh, really bad. I watched it twice. I uh, I watched the clips. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't watch it twice through. Yeah, the second time I was like folding laundry and shit. I, I was just I, and looking okay. up just just for like filler, going get just getting the names down and everything. But like, it was so yep. convoluted, and they, they did so many like B plots upon B yes. plots. It just and they cut too hard from one to the other in the middle of the action on one of them to go to the other one and I, I i had to get my i had to, I had to get it straight in my head it was just one of those yeah movies. It's, it's hard to get your bearings for sure because even the main plot is a b plot yeah they tried to spread out i guess the characters as much as they could which was a bad idea it's like it seems when you have like a giant cast like that i, I think the mortal Kombat movie the new one also suffered from trying to include too many characters from the video game yeah you know so then you have like a scientist who is dalsy and it's like he doesn't fight at all, but then again, no one does. So yeah, um, so yeah, let's get into it, man. I've got some sure. bad reviews. Um, okay. You got any YouTube stuff this week? Uh, yeah, it wasn't. I couldn't. The whole movie wasn't on YouTube, but I I, I looked at select scenes and found some comments to look. Oh, at. okay, all right, cool. Um, so yeah, I'll throw it to you after I, I read these reviews here. Okay, Richard Harrington of the Washington Post. What can you say when a video game is more exciting and entertaining than the big budget feature it inspires? Not much, and that's exactly the problem with Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Uh, pretty to the point. Kind of harsh, but, yeah. you know, the, those are funny. And here's the thing, I never played Street Fighter, and so like, I, I would go to the arcade like, as a kid, and like I was a button masher. That's all I did, so yeah. like yeah, that, right, right. that in itself was more entertaining than the movie. I agree. Uh, Blood Brothers Reviews. Uh, I didn't get an author. It was just from the site. Okay. I'm very torn on the 1994 live-action Street Fighter film. On the one hand, the movie might be one of the largest pieces of crap to ever grace the silver screen with the poor set designs, awful dialogue, overacting, wasted moments, and the complete ignorance of the stories and characters of the video game Street Fighter. On the other hand, it's a hilarious riot of a film to be enjoyed because of its poor set designs, awful dialogue, overacting, wasted moments, and complete ignorance to the stories and characters <laughs> of the video game Street Fighter. It's a weird line that this film walks that requires a lot of grace from its audience for its atrociousness. Okay. That is scathing. And accurate. Yeah. yeah, very accurate. I read that one and I was like, oh, that is going on the pod. That's really nice. <laughs> uh, so what did you find on YouTube? Okay, so I found, um, so basically Bison, uh, played by Raul Julia, per, uh, pardon yeah. me if I mispronounced that, uh, there's a bunch of comments about him and his illness that I wanted to read. Yeah. Because, um, uh, I did not know that about him. So Raul Julia mm. carried this movie even while dying. His charisma along with pure 90s cheese makes it worth a watch. Um, mm. the, and I found this one that's kind of nice. Uh, the fact that Raul Julia wanted to make this movie for his kids while dying of stomach cancer and killed it was amazing. Uh, God damn it, I love this movie. And then there's one more. I, I not to shit on a, uh, a dead man, but I feel like mm. this one was a little extra. Even oh, frail and dying of stomach cancer, Raul is a towering titan on screen. His voice, his movements, his passion. In a video game movie, he was doing for his kids. The man is giving a Shakespearean performance of campy brilliance. If you're <laughs> watching this movie, you're watching it for him. Uh, rest in peace to one of the truly greatest actors of his generation. <laughs> okay. And then um, I got I got one more. Oh, you want? Okay, you got yeah. to, do you have something to add to that? Uh, no, I I do feel like they were uh, definitely pouring it on there. That yeah, like, a little obvious. Like I said, YouTube comments are chock full of mental illness. Um, yes. <laughs> my favorite one: Van Dam just admitted to do so much coke during the movie he don't even remember actually being in it. <laughs> that is just a way of like getting yourself out of a sticky situation. Yeah, just blame it on coke. Right. Yeah. That t tends to be the, uh, tends to be the big MO in Hollywood. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hashtag Matthew Perry. Oh yeah. Um, all right. So let's go into, uh, test number one. Uh, okay. I know we don't have a bumper for this baby yet, but, uh, we're going to make the Keystone apparatus okay. a test because it's easy to score. 
Sure. Um, so we do this every week. Um, we try to get a feel for the ecosystem that the movie in, it lives in. Uh, and we try to decide whether it's a keystone, uh, port. So, you know, a keystone predator is important because it keeps, uh, like, you know, the rodents at bay that would kill off whole populations and the whole ecosystem would suffer without the keystone predator or what have you. Yeah. Um, so is this movie important in that way, uh, to the community of movies that it exists in? Let's find out. Okay. Um, we're going to go to Rotten Tomatoes to find the, um, critic scores for all the movies that I'm about to list to you in the customers also watched section after Street Fighter on okay. Amazon Prime. Um, sure. and here we go. We're going to, oh, yeah, and then we're going to compare, uh, Street Fighter's percentage to that. So I'm going to have you guess, uh, what okay. that percentage is. <clears throat> sure. Okay. Double Dragon with Robert Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the liquid metal guy from T2. Okay. That got a 13. Okay. Uh, Mortal Kombat. All right. With Christopher Lambert. Sure. 44. Wow. Uh, that one is special to us because it yeah. was one of our pilot episodes. Yeah. Uh, The Quest with Van Damme. Okay. A 14. Maybe a later watch. Seems par for the course for him. Yep. Uh, three ninja, ninjas with, uh, Victor Wong. Mm-hmm. Uh, 32. Okay. Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt okay. Russell. Everyone knows that one. Yeah. Got a 75. Okay. DOA, Dead or Alive with Jamie Presley. Hmm. A 33. Okay. And finally, Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. Okay. A 13. Uh, so the average for all of those movies, very low, uh, compared to other weeks. Okay. Was a 32%. Okay. Do you want to guess Street Fighters? I'm going to say Street Fighters still probably prey. Uh, I gotta say it's, uh, I'm going to give it double digits. I'm going to say it got like an 11. <laughs> that's a very good guess. It got a 13. Okay. <laughs> it is prey. Uh, that's a score of negative 19. Okay. Uh, so. I am going to, in the future, um, take the scores for the budget botch watch, but we're going to call um, the botch watch uh, a wash for this week since um, we replaced it essentially with the Keystone Emberitis. So Okay. Um, so, yeah, this movie could die off and the ecosystem of movies around it uh, would be just fine. Yeah. All right. So this week, the budget botch watch is going to be a little bit different. I mean, I still want you to play the bumper because I love it. Okay. Um, so we're going to, um, we're going to have Rob guess the budget cause Chris already knows. And, uh, then we're going to point out a few, uh, ways that they spent money inappropriately because that's funny. Okay. Uh, so let's get into it. The budget botch watch. It's the budget botch watch. Okay. Right. So, um, do you have anything you want to mention as a, as a, uh, waste of money? Um, why they have to make Charlie green and make his hair red and long like the Hulk? <laughs> uh, they he, did make him look like the Hulk. He could have been fine staying like Caucasian or Hispanic or whatever he was, mm, and yes. just had short hair and just just the whole like clockwork orange apparatus they had on him. I thought was just <laughs> a ridiculous waste of money. So, I agree, and it was like a big machine surrounding him, so it must have cost money to build. Yeah. Expensive set. Yeah. Okay, my number three biggest waste of money in this uh, movie. The Dr. Robotnik floating platform that Raul Julia uses like twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I- I'll agree with that. It's- it seems like a lot of um, – I mean, you probably had to get a bunch of Union and OSHA people in there on the set to like, make sure it was operated safely. And Yeah, that's true. They probably went into like Union gold time to just have those two scenes. <laughs> uh number two biggest waste of money. The endless radar, satellite imagery, frequency adapters, and mini TVs. Just total bullshit. Why was there so much of this stuff? It looked bad and it was a waste of money. They were trying to make like a like a, a localized set of incidents be like this global outrage. And <laughs> I know he, I, I know he wanted like I know that um Bison wanted 
like world domination, but he was like, yeah, everything was all tied. Like, when I do finally capture the Queen of England, then this will be worth five British pounds. <laughs> like, so he, <laughs> right. the, the guy had no uh, to throw back to Battlefield Earth. He had no leverage over oh, nice. anybody. So, like, it seems yeah. like to get like the whole globe involved over what was like an isolated like East Asian faction just seems yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. He does need to sit down for a curbango with Turl so that Turl can teach him a thing or two about how to leverage your position. Yeah. I agree. Uh, number one most egregious waste of money, in my opinion, was the stupid fucking stealth boat. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the thing that they used for, uh, I don't know, four minutes of the movie and yeah. was not properly stealthed and was pushing water uh, on either side of it. So even when it was invisible, it was still humpiest. Yeah, and you know what really pissed me off about the stealth bomber is, um, I mean, like, a boat like that technically should be, like, be able to start and stop on a dime, turn at, like, a really quick pivot. And yeah. they had to have, like, a bunch of, like, migrant workers, like, push it off the dock for its inaugural um, <laughs> yeah, takeoff. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. But, yeah, and, and then it costs extra staff to do that. So it's even yeah. more... Uh, of an expenditure. All right. Uh, yeah, I thought that'd be funny to just do it that way. Yeah. So um, let's get into test number two now. Okay. Uh, and this is the elevator movie plot pitch. Um, so an easy way to determine the strength of a movie is to summarize its plot succinctly. Um, and the gold standard plot pitch for the bomb filter is Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Short, clear, and easy to understand Jurassic Park can be accurately summarized in as little as 10 seconds. When summarized, bad movies are convoluted, unclear, and lengthy. So to help us determine how bad our subject is, we compare its plot pitch to that of the 10-second standard. Uh, so any seconds past that 10 is our score. So we'll also administer a star rating uh, for the quality, and that might influence whether or not, um, in this case, Street Fighter wins that category. So let's get into it. Uh the elevator movie plot pitch. Hey, 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 I, I gotta show you my script for this movie that I just came up with. It's, uh, you ever see, um, have you ever seen Top Gun? It's like the guy from Top Gun, but he, he works at a mall. And okay, so it's a nice rock fairy. He's trying to those little lotion like, packets at the sample. Hey, 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 sir, sir. I know you're in a hurry. Would you try to get the new one? So he's got the lotion Okay, enough of that. Uh, enough of that noise. All right, I'm going to count you down. Uh, three, two, one, go. Jean Claude Van Damme stars in Street Fighter, the movie, the game in 1995, but only thanks to his success in the role of Guile in Street Fighter, the movie, based on Street Fighter 2, the game. Guile and his allied nations slash American forces must defeat the evil M. Bison, a madman poised to kill hostages in a plot to dominate Earth. I I'm pretty sure. Guile recruits the help of other street fighters, reporters, Samoans, and former boxers to take him down. Will Bison release the hostages? Will he release rapidly genetically modified super soldier Blanca? Or will Guile and his fighting forces bombard and sneak into his facility at the same time in order to defeat him. That's it. Uh, just about 46 seconds. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a big score. 40, yeah. 40 seconds. Okay. 46 seconds. I'm going to write that down uh, as a 36. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you like uh, for a star, star rating here? I'm going to give that a two. I mean, <laughs> it's of no fault of your own. It's just a, no. uh, you did your best. You can't. Uh, you can polish a turd all you want. It's still a piece of shit. So, dude, what, I I knew what my plot pitch was. At, at least how it was going to start when I when I went into John Claude's yeah. uh, filmography and I saw that he was in Street Fighter the movie the game <laughs> because I I knew that Street Fighter the movie was already based on Street Fighter two the game. So I was yeah. like, this is uh, so circular. I have to mention it somehow. Yeah. So I put it in my plot pitch. Okay. So it cost me seconds, but they deserve it for all of that confusion. Yes, absolutely. Because they couldn't call the movie Street Fighter 2 because then people would assume that there was a Street Fighter 1 in the movie. So they had to base it on the second one, even though it was Street Fighter. So and let me let me ask you this, because I've, I've never like, – I, I didn't play video games growing up. I played at friends' houses, yeah. and I went to the arcade sometime. Um, okay. Is – is this in any way like the, it, it, the game or is it just borrowing the name and the character names? Um, yeah, it is 
um, I would say vaguely attached to the game. I mean, they're like M. Bison looks like that. Okay. Um, he's way more Jack than Raul Julia is. Um, yeah. but then again, he's sick. So, yeah. um, but they, Dalzim, like I said before, is a scientist. He's, he's like a, um, I, I don't know. I don't want to miss, uh, interpret what he actually was, but he, he had like fire, um, that came out of his hands and he can yeah. stretch really far and stuff. But in the movie, he's just a scientist. Okay. Uh, Blanca looks like Blanca. There's no backstory. E Honda is Japanese in the movie. He's Hawaiian. Yeah. Um, Balrog's a bad guy, I think, okay. but he's like a camera crew guy. It, it's so it's, it's very like they just shove the names in there wherever they can get them. Basically. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, um, we got our score for two. Why don't we move on to test number three, okay. the indefensible dialogue counter? Oh, this is going to be a good one. Oh, this is going to be insane, dude. So this okay. test gathers the horrible lines of dialogue into a collection that is then tallied to give us their score. So we tally it if you can't defend it, Rob. So I'm going to start shooting some lines at you. Okay. And uh, let's see what our score ends up being. I bet you it's a big one. Okay. The test number three, the indefensible dialogue counter. Okay. You say something that makes absolutely no sense. Something similarly stupid. Hello, hello. Okay, number one. All right, this is Guile. All right. Hostages, if you can hear me, hang on. We're coming. We're coming. Charlie, hang on, buddy. We're coming. Hang on. Um, I, I want to point out that not only was that like a, a dumb, annoying line, but he yeah. sold out his friend Ch- Charlie because like, Charles or whatever is his name. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Bison realizes it's him and then he turns him into Blanca. Yeah. So th- really that, that must've been the cocaine. So um, <laughs> I, you could take that off. I'm not going to defend that one. Cause I, I was just I like, mean, they didn't know who Charlie was at the time. Like he was there. But exactly. He, yeah. He just blew his spot up like ridiculously. Yeah. He just blew him up. Um, Ken to Sagat. Uh, Let's stop the mismanners and get down to business. Do you have the one hundred thousand dollars? So wouldn't they use like code words in case the other person's wired or something? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, "Let's stop. Let's skip the mismanners." Yeah. So that combined, I thought was worth a worth a look. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, you know, I have like a day job, but I also like copy edit and proofread and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, I get paid yeah, like a me- I get paid like a meager amount for that, but like, you know, just just somewhat vaguely quality work would look at a line like that and just scratch <laughs> it off the script completely. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's a tick then. Yeah, I'll take that off. All right, that's we're two for two, headed into number three. Uh, Sagat to Ken and Ryu. What's the matter, gentlemen? Surely you're not afraid of your own weapons. And then he fire, has everyone fire them, right? Yeah. He's, he goes, toys. I like my games live and in living color. And then everyone attacks. Okay, so this is like a 50-50 for me because I, you need to establish that they were con men early on. And like that, yeah. they were, that's what they, they, wanted to, they wanted to get the money, hand on the phone, leave the drop zone, and then like make the deal. So yeah, yeah. so basically they then they'd find out it's toys and – and they'd get, be already long gone. So I yeah. understand the need for that scene, but the yes. whole live and in living color made absolutely no sense. No, no so sense at all. I'm going to give it like an F minus. So take it off. Like it, it, okay. was worth a, it was worth a look for defending, but I would not defend it. Okay. So like halfway defended is a uh, roundup to not defend it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got some written dialogue because I like these. Okay. Uh, so for number four, the chemical bags that are labeled, um, you know, that they use on Blanca. <laughs> yeah. Did you read them? I forgot what they said because they were so stupid. It was like Mountain Dew, uh, Mountain Dew Code Red, basically. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's what it looked like. And it said anabolic plasma, warning, toxic at high doses. That's one. Yeah. And then the other said DNA mutagens, use extreme caution, which, I mean, these aren't too, too bad, but, like, the labels are huge. The the really funny thing is that they are labeled, like, bison ABS. So they yeah. are bison brand DNA mutant, <laughs> mutagens and uh, yeah. anabolic plasma. So he um, so keep in mind that bison has a brand that makes these chemicals, because uh, I'm going to mention something else later that uh, we'll pull it back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as for Defended, 
What do you think? No. <laughs> okay. You could have put anything else on it. You could have made it not look like Mountain Dew. It, yeah, absolutely. It, it really did look like soda. Um, and yeah. I, I actually meant to go back. Uh, maybe you know. I, I meant to go back and take a look at the bags like later yeah. in the uh, movie and see if the, any of them, like if they were emptied at all. I think they were all full still. Yeah, they, I think so too. I forgot to check. But I, I bet you that they were so like lazy and dumb about, um, you know, the set designs and stuff that they didn't yeah. even think that like he would have had to have had some. They kept be... counting. They kept counting like the body mass percentage increase. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. loudspeaker. But I don't think they ever showed those bags um, like decreasing in volume. <laughs> right. So they definitely should have. Um, okay. So four for four. Mm-hmm. Number five. This is Gaio again. Okay. It, he's talking to his like lieutenant and um, like T-Hawk or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, so the, the girl and the guy. Yeah. And he's reasoning. He says, if Sagat is to run into, uh, if he's to run against Bison, he must know where Bison is hiding. All we have to do is infiltrate someone into his gang. Mm-hmm. Why, um, why does he assume that he knows where Bison is hiding, hiding because he, uh, is gonna run against him? That's a good point. Yeah. Cause everybody's like speaking through screens. Like they, they made the whole screen thing very explicit in this film where it's, it's a secret lair. It's a bunker. It's, it's. Yeah. Why would, even though he's doing dealings with him, it's gonna be in a mutual location with lots of witnesses. Yeah, exactly. Nowhere I mean, they're, near. In, they're in, yeah, they're in that like camp. Where there's like there's like a black market camp or something. Yeah, not the fortress. So uh, why do we think that Sagat knows where Bison is? I I didn't get that. So yeah. five, five. Yeah, I agree with that. Five for five. Okay, six. Sagat to Guile. This isn't over, Guile. I own this city. And then Guile back. Well, I'm the repo man, and you're out of business. That was going to be my honorable mention. And I'm not going to defend it because here's the thing. If he, if he owns a city, Repo yeah. Man only recollects things that you're making payments on, that you're financing, that you stopped paying. So yeah, if exactly. you already own the city, it's not going to get repossessed. <laughs> so it doesn't even work. I mean, it would have been bad even if it worked. Yeah. But it doesn't even work. So six yeah. for six? Yep. Okay, number seven. Uh, announcer over speaker at the refugee camp. Okay. Anyone resisting arrest will be shot <laughs> at the refugee camp where they're helping people. Wasn't that right after too? Like they were like, "Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be good." Like they, yeah, yeah, they're taking them off the boat. They don't mention where the refugees are from, <laughs> and, they, and they're threatening to shoot um, them for resisting arrest. I almost want to defend it because like there's lots of little like comic relief things, like where it's like the timing. I think yes. it's meant to make it like that. Like where it's like, "Oh, I hope it doesn't get any worse." And like you hear all the guns click, and he's like, "Oh, it got worse." <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so you're going to defend that. I'm going to defend it. I think it, it made me chuckle. It, it made me like actually laugh out loud. Uh, like one of those, ah! like, you know. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, so six for seven. Yeah. Number eight, uh, Zang Keith. So as the explosive truck is headed towards them in the yeah. tent, mm-hmm. they're watching the monitor instead of running away. Yeah. And Zang Keith says, quick, change the channel. <laughs> I'm not going to defend that, but I laugh my ass off. <laughs> Okay, seven for eight. Yeah. Uh, nine. Chung Lee spits on Ken. Ken says okay. back, you're going to dehydrate yourself. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> eight, eight for nine. Uh, ten. How do you keep from crying out, says Balrog to Honda after being whipped in the back. Mm-hmm. Honda says, I am sumo, brother. My body can be one place and my mind somewhere else. So Balrog says back, next time your mind leaves, tell it to bring back a pizza. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to defend that. That's fucking okay. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Nine for ten. Uh, Eleven. Another little piece of written dialogue. Yeah. Um, Bison's radar network is called Bison Radar Net. So he yeah. also makes radar machines, apparently. Yeah. In his uh, free time, yeah, in his um, own in his own currency too. Like he just yeah, has, he also has his own currency. He reminds me of Cartman, like when he's trying to plan out like his franchise <laughs> for um, Marvel. <laughs> yes, like he has all the merch ready. To, he has all the merch ready to go, but like he doesn't even have like he's not even off the ground floor yet. 
Dude, I love the coon. That th- those episodes are so funny. Yeah. Um, do you want to do ten for eleven, or do you want to defend that? I'm not going to defend that. Okay, ten ten for eleven. Yeah. Um, I still have some to go. Cammy, okay. uh, uh, Jean Claude's lieutenant. Mm-hmm. She's they're like raiding the fortress, right? Yeah. So she goes and she kicks a guy, mm-hmm. and as she's kicking, she goes the rough kick. <laughs> I think I missed that one, but I don't want, I think it's, that's morally reprehensible. I don't think yeah, it belongs I, anywhere. I agree. Uh, 13, dial to bison. Come out from behind, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Come out from behind the curtain, wizard. Let's see how pure your combat really is. How do you like um, that? Yeah. Cause that's, he's talking about pure on, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to defend that one either. It's, okay, I mean, it's a Wizard of Oz reference. Um, yeah. It was, it, you know what? That, that was actually, I'll give, that was more clever than I would have given John Claude Van Damme credit for. So maybe I'll defend that. Okay. Um, so we, we are 11 for, no, we are 12 for 14. 12 for 14. Yeah. 12 for, 11 for 13. Oh my God. What is wrong with me today? Okay, uh, number 14. Um, this is more written dialogue. Bison's computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, I'm just going to read you some of the things that it says, like, when it's, like, malfunctioning. Okay. It says superconductor repressors. That's one mm-hmm. category. Yeah. Security. Analysis. Reactor one. Energy field unstable. And slave system. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend it because you know what it really shows like how his mind works I think and for a film mm-hmm. that really does a poor job in setting up the characterization I think you need anything you can get and okay I, I'll give him that I'll give him that okay so we are eleven for fourteen then okay uh, fifteen uh so I, you know at the end uh, t- uh Bison's suit like kicks back up. Like the very, very, very end. Yeah. Um, it's like an Easter egg. It says to him, good morning, General Bison. What is your menu choice for today? And then you hear like, beep, boop, 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 beep, beep. And then yeah. it clicks world domination. <laughs> and that's his menu choice for the day. Yeah. Um, um, how, how do you like that? I, I already gave him one for showing what he's like with computer okay. stuff. So I'm not going to give right. him a second one. 12 for 15, and yeah. this is my last one, okay? okay? I swear. Uh, henchman, you know the guy with like the ponytail? Yeah. Uh, he says to, to Dalton, uh, you think you're smart, huh? Well, let's see how smart you are when you're not breathing. <laughs> I mean, how many? So, th- someone wrote the script. They gave this to an exec. They wrote a check. They funded it. They got catering. They got people into a room. They did table reads. They they did yes. best rehearsals, and yep. that's the best they could do. Yeah. Let's see how smart you are when you're not breathing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Want to. Uh, all right. So final score is thirteen, which I think might be our biggest uh, score so far. Okay. So Street Fighter is. Um, fighting a lot harder than they did in the movie. Yeah. Um, I have an honorable mention. I don't know if you want to take this one off or not. Yeah, but when, sure. But, yeah. but when Bison is talking about pa- uh, Pax Bisonica and he's yeah. pointing he's pointing to one of his henchmen, he's like, make the food court a little bigger. I think all the major franchises are going to want to get in. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, he, I, I do want to take that off. Yeah, because he's like building a mega mall inside of his like world domination <laughs> right, complex. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. That's great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 14 for 17. 14 is a huge score. Yeah. Um, let's get into the emotometer overspill. Okay. Um, so for this test, we will use another piece of custom equipment we refer to as the emotometer. The emotometer can be fine tuned to the emotional output of the actor in question. When activated, the meter measures the peak of emotion displayed by the actor in a given scene and compares it to the range of genuine emotion a person would actually display. So 10 cages is the maximum. Uh, cages refer to, of course, our friend, uh, Nicholas Cage. 
any mm-hmm. more than 10 and we record the result. So, uh, let's get into it. The emotometer overspill. Okay. Where screaming is king. Wow! Okay. Okay. Normally, normally I go in order here, um, but I've got a couple of uh, screwy ones I'm going to throw in All right. for you. Uh, this hopefully this pod isn't as confusing as the movie was, um, but it's it's starting to get there. Number one, Guile. Uh, he says to Bison, you know, uh, trying to tempt him to come on air, I guess. Yeah. Because he knew that Bison would do that. And he says, I know you like to look at yourself on television, you sick son of a bitch. So look at this. And then he does the up yours motion, right? Yeah. And he goes, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it were Taco Bell, it'd be like mild. But it's yeah. still, um, I mean, like, like, what are you giving it for a score? I, I thought seventeen, eighteen range. Yeah, that's fair. The uh, the heat, <laughs> the end yeah. was what pushed it. You know, the up yeah. yours wouldn't have been too bad. But when he goes heat, yeah. like that, that typical karate noise. So, what do you want to give it? A seventeen or an eighteen? Uh, let's do seventeen. All right, let's we'll start a little slow. T Hawk to Chung Lee when Chung Lee is getting like escaping from their grasp. Okay, he goes, "Stop! Come back here. Where do you think you're going?" Hey, stop, stop. You don't have a chance. And then she like jumps out the window and he goes, what a screw up. You know what I thought that was when I first, cause I was, I was watching it on Tubi and like it's uncensored, but it has ads. So I, I it, yeah. the ads took me into like the realm of like watching movies on TNT when I was a kid or like TBS. And yeah. as I, I thought it was a dub. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, like, like what an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. What yeah. a yeah. screw up. No, I don't think it was a dub. No, it wasn't a dub. That's the thing. Yeah, so I, right, I checked the right. quotes afterwards, and it, that was in, that was scripted in the like director's version of it. Right. So. so my question is: Was he calling Chung Lee a screw up, or was he saying what a screw up this is? Like we're going to be in trouble now. I think he meant to do the latter, but it seemed like the former. It seemed like yeah. he was calling her a screw up. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I gave that an eighteen. Um, it's it's very wordy. It's not what you would say at all. Yeah, and it was, and he was screaming it like louder than he would. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so that. so I I mean our emoto meter gave it an eighteen. Yeah. That's the result that I uh, recorded. Cool. Yeah. Eighteen's work. Eighteen works. Yeah. Uh, Sagat the Bison. I must have been insane to think I can do business with you, Bison. You raving lunatic! And then he throws Bison dollars into the flames. Yeah. Uh, a twenty. Yeah, it's a 20 because he overacted it, but, like, he didn't even throw it into, like, an intense fire. It was, like, a little chimney. <laughs> it was, like, yeah. like roasting marshmallows. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, here's here's one of the screwy ones that I threw in there. You know how sometimes I like to mention one uh, underacting? Yeah. Uh, do you remember Captain Sawada? He, he's the guy. Mm. Um, well, I'll give you the line. I'm sure you'll remember him. Okay. Uh, so Guile is explaining how he's going to be the lone pilot. Like he hasn't revealed that it's going to be him yet, but he's like a lone pilot needs to go up the river yeah, to the back of the temple or fortress or whatever. And then, uh, Captain Sawada stands up and he goes, Colonel, a single boat against everything he's got. The pilot would have to be out of his mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gave it a negative eight. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, the emotometer did. That's yeah. That's one of those. No, don't go. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, Sonia, don't get on the boat. Hey, Sonia. <laughs> hey, hey. No. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, really bad acting. Uh, not overacting though. Yeah. Just like such a flat performance. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, number five, and we're starting to ramp up a little bit here. This is Guile. Okay. You know how the government guy comes up to him and he's like trying to shut down the whole like uh the whole fight because they're gonna pay off Bison? Yeah, the guy with the glasses, four eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh so Guile says, twenty billion dollars. What will stop him from taking hostages next month and asking for fifty billion? A hundred billion. 
And then he chops the government agent like in the chest with both hands and yeah. knocks him backwards a couple feet. <laughs> uh, why are you fighting him now? Yeah. Uh, 22 is how it registered. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, so Guile again, right? Okay. And this, this, uh, is going to take me a minute, but I think it's worth it, right? Yeah. The war is canceled. We can all go home. Meanwhile, ideals like peace, freedom, and justice, they just get packed up. But we can all go home. Well, I am not going home. I'm going to get on my boat, and I'm going up river, and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so hard that next time bison want, the next bison wannabe is going to feel it. Now, who wants to go home? And who wants to come with me? That registered as a 23. That's fair. Just the, the next guy is going to feel it. I didn't understand, like... Yeah. The next bison wannabe is going to feel it. But Not yeah. to mention that he says, I'm going up Reaver. And yeah. he says he's going to kick his ass so hard. <laughs> yeah. the, the with me at the end, also totally over the top. I just don't think John claudes good. Um, there's one of the YouTube comments that I didn't bring in. I didn't, I didn't screenshot it or anything, but yeah. they were just like... He's an American with a Scandinavian accent who also sounds yes. Asian. like he he it sounds like he was trying to method act as like a bunch of different nationalities at once and Yeah, yeah, all right. That's so like a stew. Yeah, and this missed the he, like, took the melting pot. He took the melting pot thing a little seriously. Yeah. All right, uh number 7, I'm going back to Captain Sawada just for fun. Okay. Um so Guile says to him that he's like going up the back and that he'll be there in a minute. And then Sawada says, we'll be there, Colonel. Just save some for us. And then turns to his men and he says, formation attack. <laughs> just like, just like that. I swear to God. Yeah. Uh, no, another remember, negative eight. Yeah. There's a um, lot of that in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Really? That, that guy, I just couldn't get over how bad he was. Uh, Bison, as he blows up the stealth boat. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Game over! I <laughs> uh, gave that a 23. Fair. Um, okay, not the last mention of Bison, but um, it, it, here's another. Uh, Bison, you shall be killed by a wild beast. A beast born of my own genius. Raise the incubation chamber. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Registered as a 24. I've got two more yeah. for you, buddy, okay. and then we'll see if you've got any honorable mentions. Uh, before I before I get to the champ, I want to mention Zangief as a collective. Like the, okay. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the Zangief variety pack. Okay. Fight me, coward. Bison is a bad guy. You got paid. Change the channel. This is our training facility. He was a brave man. A true hero. <laughs> that was just some of his uh, some of his work there. Uh, I gave him a 24. Uh, yeah. Equal to Bison's incubation chamber line. Overall, yeah. Because he was... Because he, he would say something, and then I forget the other guy. Um, he, it, it, always, it would always be, yeah, it always be a slow turn and a slow stare. Like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> yeah. And so well, I, 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 they were definitely trying to convey that. He yeah. Was. Okay. Uh, so uh, our, our champion, the, the one who registered the highest uh, score on our remote meter this week, Rob, as you yeah. know, is, is Bison. Okay. Uh, and the scene that you might remember at the end where he is fighting guy, he says, you still refuse to accept my godhood? Keep your own god. In fact, this might be a good time to pray to him. For I beheld Satan as he he fell from heaven like lightning. That got a 20. That got a 27. <laughs> it was just like trying to be biblical and... Yeah. Like, I don't know I don't know who read this, who fucking approved the script. I think what happened was like... Street Fighter was Konami Productions, right? It was like, um, yeah, Capcom, I think. Capcom, right? Yeah, yeah, Konami, yeah, one of the, yeah, Capcom. I think you're right, but it's like yeah. I feel like I feel like Universal just bought the the licensing for it, 
and just jammed yeah. this thing through the machine and got it out as quickly as possible without yeah, any it, focus groups or anything because it's just it's awful. Not good. <laughs> not good. Uh, any honorable mentions before uh, we get into the Ask You Championship of the Week? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, just, just bison shooting lightning like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't know exactly what he said, but let's let's go with ah, ha, 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 yeah. As he shoot the lightning because it was probably that. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay, uh, dude, let's get into it. Maybe my favorite part of the the show. Uh, okay, our full on ass cheek championship of the week. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to ass cheek. Right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Ass Cheek Arena. As we get ready for another epic street fight, let's head down for our introductions. Your challenger, standing at a very tall six foot four, weighing in at an even two hundred pounds from Shadaloo City, Shadaloo, <laughs> M. Bison, and the crowd is booing heavily here. And standing at six feet. Weighing in at 238 pounds this week. From Long Beach, California. Your reigning, defending, full-on Aztec champion of the world, Nicholas Cage. All right. Bison and Cage are monologuing at each other to start, but I don't think either is getting the message. Cage has given himself permission to attack as he is diving straight at Bison. Bison, though, ducks out of the way and into a secret chamber hidden here at S. Cheek Arena. He hits the gas button. But we're in an outdoor stadium, so Cage is going to be just fine. Oh, this is awkward as Bison is forced to come back out of the cell. He is mean mugging in an attempt to keep up the in- intimidation, however. Cage now feeling froggy leaps forward and the two are tangled up. Bison, with the superior strength, lifts Cage off the ground, but with a quick chop. He puts an end to that. Cage now with a combination of the classic left, right, chest kick, and Bison is off balance. Bison, though, activating his thrusters, lifts off the ground. He's going to be hard to handle. Cage has a bicycle, and the chase is on. Oh. Cage picking up good speed here, but is run down by the faster Bison. Bison with a throw, and Cage is rattled. These two warriors are more evenly matched than you might expect, but there really hasn't been a whole lot of fighting. Bison screams, lift the incubator, and here comes Blanca. Cage overwhelmed. Blanca is mauling him. My, my, I I don't know how Cage is going to recover here. Blanca, though, with a change of heart, he's he, he just snapped his own neck. I guess the guilt of what he has done to our champion was just too much. Bison now has little left to do, though. He seems to be climbing into his floating command center. Oh my god, he just landed that metal beast born of his own genius atop Cage. Wow, that about wraps it up here. My goodness, what an epic street fight we were promised. Did they deliver? I don't know. Back to the pod now as Bison is literally flying away. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What? What is that? Uh, a hand has emerged from underneath the platform. Yes, it's Cage. <laughs> He may have lost the battle, but he lives to fight another day. Will we see him again? Definitely. Probably. Absolutely. That's it. And, and here we are back at the pod. And I am just, uh, I am just, I can't believe that Cage three time defending champion has lost. Yeah. I mean, Bison was a worthy contender though. I mean, if anybody deserves the ass, the the flabby ass cheek of justice, it it would be him. Yeah. Absolutely. Flabby. Very probably flabby, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, he was, he was getting on in age there. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but also, you know, that opens up possibilities for, for me, uh, cause it, it's getting really hard to do cage in the wicker man fighting every week. So yeah, that's true. Um, huh? Yeah. Uh, Not that have, that influenced the winner at all in, in, in any way. And on top of that, we have cage in like 107 other movies that will yes, eventually absolutely. be reviewing. So, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back. <laughs> um, all right. Hey, Rob, uh, let's, let's get into that ad read you got. Oh, okay. This is actually a crossover. Uh, today's episode of the Bomb Filter Podcast is brought to you by our fellow network affiliates and good friends over at the Your Dad is a Mailman podcast. 
<laughs> want to know what it's like for your dad to be a mailman? <laughs> Do you want to know what it's like if you're also a mailman while your dad is a mailman? Well, if your dad is a mailman, and so are you, then this is the pod to listen to. Join our host, Jake, no last name listed, and his misadventures of being a mailman whose dad is also a mailman. Your dad is a mailman podcast, only on Anchor FM. <laughs> wow, that's that was amazing. Thank you for that. You got um, it. Hey, and I just want to shout out Justin, who asked me to uh, put him into this episode. Uh, okay. As a coworker of mine. I actually did because um, I tried to say the word justice uh, during my last segment, and I said yeah. Justin. So okay. he must have manifested himself into my thoughts uh, yeah. today. Okay. So congrats, Justin. I hope you hear this. Let me know. I'm not going to tell you about it, so you're going to have to show me that you listened to this episode. Yeah. Justin. He's going to give you a timestamp. Yeah. Yeah. Timestamp, Justin. Required. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to test number five, the poor taste detector. Okay. So um, this test is designed to identify and flag potential hazards created by the film crew. These hazards consist of moments of immorality, abuse, racism, phobias, and any other in poor taste scenarios. Let's okay. get into it. Test number five, the poor taste detector. Oh, my God. You can't say that. It's 2021. Does it All it? right. Nice. Um, okay, Sagat um, offers Ken and Ryu drinks and women. So prostitution, right off the bat. Okay. Um, number two. Uh, how many people did Guile kill in that cage fighting arena when he blasted through it with a, like, missile truck? <laughs> yeah, he just drove through the boxing ring in the audience. And then yeah, he had told- the audacity to say, like, oh, you're all under arrest. <laughs> yeah, right. Not to check, you know, he decided not to check uh, how many people he might have run over. With yeah. That <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the number three, the Iraqi black market Christmas blowout sale at Bison's camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they were like, this one only flew into two buildings and it was only in you know, one <laughs> desert storm raid. <laughs> uh, all right. Number four. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the dancers come out at that same uh, blowout sale, and DJ, who you mentioned before, is like yeah. salivating, and he goes, ah. "Yeah." <laughs> and if you want to talk about underacting too, like, uh, yeah, I know we're past the emoto meter right now, but like those yeah, dancers yeah. come out and they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 just like flapping their arms like acidly. Yeah, I'm sure they don't want to be there. Yeah. Uh, Chung Lee is, of course, fighting in a sexy suit. Mm-hmm. She's like, Rick Porter Garb, all of a sudden, she's very sexy to fight. Yeah. And funny how that happens. Yep. Uh, number six, um, take the reporter to my chambers. We have decided to grant her a private interview. That yep. bison there, uh, felt pretty rapey. And that's, that's when he was changing in front of her, like Mr. Rogers, right? <laughs> he immediately does that after. Okay. Um, and I thought it'd be really funny if he came back out in like a pink thong. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, uh, so immediately following that, Chung Lee is now in a new outfit. Uh, her yeah. makeup is done and yeah. her hair is up in fancy. <laughs> yeah. So did she also get behind that thing and change? Like, did she do that before M. Bison or are yeah. we to assume other things like with Sonya Blade and Mortal Kombat again when she was like in a totally different outfit. Like who, it, who changed her? Did she voluntarily change into that? Outfit? Yeah. Or was she made like a, almost like a turn of the currency basically. Like, cause like Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat, like her hair is all teased out like crazy. Yes. Like, it's assuming yeah. her feathers were ruffled just a little. Just I a little. think so. Yeah. This one, she's all done up real nice. Yeah. Uh, so number eight, Bison says, I know women and you're harmless. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, I mean, did not sound too good. Yeah, and that's after she did kick some ass, too. So, I mean... Oh, yeah. She, so she clearly, clearly she's a contender. Uh, number nine, Cammy, uh, that's the lieutenant of Giles. Um, she just gets progressively sexier as the movie goes on. Yeah. She's in, like, a full, like, um, what do they call that, fatigues? Where, like, the arms and legs are completely covered in, like, blue and, and black camo. Yeah. Um, but by the end, she's got like sleeveless shirt and like tight pants and like yeah. braids and stuff. 
Um, but that is a theme because that kind of happens with everybody. Anyway, yeah. uh, did you catch the Japanese reporter Chung Lee and uh, Captain Sawada watching Zangief and Honda like destroying the model? It was a Godzilla joke. Yeah, I got that. And then they even had like the like the <laughs> the yeah. stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I wasn't sure. Do you think that's in poor taste? Uh I, I think it was just like they wanted to squeeze reference in. Uh I mean eh, I'm I'm borderline on that one. It's up to you, man. I Okay. I, I'm I'm not gonna count it. Yeah. Um DJ's fake Jamaican accent. Yeah. Uh drove me crazy. Specifically in this line when he goes um, uh, my mama didn't raise no fool. Yeah. That feels like halfway to Jar Jar Binks to me. Yeah. And I, I don't like it. Okay. Um, and lastly, um, unless you have any honorable mentions for, and, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but, uh, um, it wasn't really poor taste, but when they, when they were just like trying to escape prison and they like, they did that fake fight and they grabbed the keys and yeah, and Ken and Ryu, and um, they, they're picking the lock, and the other guy, what's his name, the eye patch, um, Sagat. Sagat is like, "Hey, give me the keys!" And it just seemed like it wasn't in poor taste, but it just seemed like th- I, these guys don't like each other. They're teaming up that quickly, and they're going to team up so they can run through yeah. a gate and run over a bunch of people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. what, I think Sagat's like troops were getting ready to like take over the truck already, yeah. anyway. So like. I don't know why that was even necessary because he could have just killed them both. Yeah. But it just um, seemed like, let's team up real quick and run over a bunch of people. So I just... I, <laughs> yeah, I, right, right. I, it doesn't uh, really fit the, the criteria. Guys are, yeah. That guys are that bad. The bad guys are that bad that they'll just, like, team up. Yeah. Like, the drop of a hat. Like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, my number 12, so I, I guess we're going to count... You want to count 11? Um, yeah. If, if you count this one. Guile finally accepts the interview with Chung Lee. If she wears that dress. Yeah. That, it is one of the things I, I, I'll attribute it to the cocaine, I guess. Yep. Just, he's just like, yeah, but you have to wear that dress. And it's just, you, yeah. you, you, this woman has been like blown up. Like you're really going <laughs> to come on to her right now. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Bad timing. Number yeah. one, it's in front of everyone. So it's putting her on the spot. Number yeah. two. And number three, it just cheapens the Guile character. Like right. Like, at the end of the movie where he's supposed to be this like hero who just came out of an explosion, whatever, like yeah. he make, makes a pass at Chung Lee. Yeah. Just it's, bad time. This honorable dude with like impeccable standards and like military, <laughs> yeah. like loyalty to like the, the, the United nations or the allied nations. Allied and, nations. Yeah. yeah. And then he's just like, yeah, all of a sudden he's just like, yeah, why don't you just dress like all in skimpy clothes and uh, insinuate that it's going to be a private interview. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know who else did that? M. Bison, the villain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. That is what I have. So the score is 11. I jotted that down uh, okay. for our movie comparison at the end of time. All right. Um, so we're going to get into test number six here. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is the uh, counting for entropy test where okay. we um, study how bad movies rely too heavily on films of the past. So when recycling an idea, a director or a writer – is committing to a trope. So almost every movie has one or two, but bad movies have many. Uh, we count them up, and uh, that helps us to evaluate film. So okay. let's get into test number six, accounting for entropy. Obvious tropes, brought to you by, oh, he's right behind me, isn't he? We're going to need a bigger boat, and well, fuck me sideways and call me Senator Wimpy. Right. Okay. Uh, starting with number one, the news, uh, the world news rundown. So right when it starts, you get um, up to speed with a news yeah. report. Okay. Uh, number two, the one hundred thousand dollars in a briefcase. Yeah. Uh, number three, Ken and Ryu synchronized fighting. Yeah. So somehow that makes them more credible, I guess, because they both do a, like a hip toss and like a kick throw or whatever at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, the eyeball download of info you mentioned before with Blanca. Yeah. The, we the, saw this in Battlefield Earth. You see it, uh, the Matrix, which I love, by the way. Yeah. You know, just 
uh, maybe not an eyeball download, but the immediate download of information, in this case, uh, through the eyeballs. Yeah, and I think that originated with Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange, where they're yeah, um, yeah, I think they're right. brainwashing Alex to make him like not evil anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so five, I had tearaway clothes. So it's just a stupid little thing, but Ryu is in the cage about to not fight. Yeah. And, uh, like a girl comes by and just rips his clothes off. Like, why are his clothes that detachable that a girl can just come up behind you and rip them off? Yeah. The whole third act was like, Oh man, we're, we got to take down all these henchmen. Ooh, better take our shirts off first. And yeah, exactly. Everybody's shirtless. And uh, oiled. Number six. Go ahead. Sorry. I said shirtless and oiled. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, number six. Uh, this you mentioned also, uh, keys from the guard after a like distraction fight. Yeah. That shit happens all the time, dude. Mm-hmm. Number seven, the he's not dead jump scare. A uh, scare. Uh huh. Um. So Guile is under a sheet in a back room somewhere, and he's actually not dead. He's just waiting for Chung Lee to approach him. Can I, guess, I, I guess. can I talk to you about that for a second? Because yes, of course. I mean, like he wasn't even necessarily waiting for her. He didn't. Like, she she was going to no. find him. So like. If you look at it from, like, the fourth wall perspective, he's yep. just a guy laying in a room by himself for hours, just <laughs> pretending to be dead. Still, With a still, sheet over his head. Still wearing the thing to so, so he could say, oh, it was a decoy. <laughs> so, like, and it's, just, and, just in case. Just in and case. It's, and it's ice cold in there. It's like yeah. a morgue room. Yeah. So maybe that's why he kept the sheet on, I guess. Yeah. Well, like, it makes no sense for the character or the movie or, like, hey, why, why would he just be laying there just in case she comes in to see if he's still there? It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so number eight, the day Bison visits uh, you is the best day of your life or whatever. Yeah. But for me, it's Tuesday, says Bison. <laughs> that is so overdone. Yeah. Uh, number nine, the villain's lair is also a gas chamber. Yeah. So he can escape and then leave you in there to die by knockout gas or whatever. Yeah. Um, did you like Bison's uh, Swiss bank account all of a sudden? Yeah, this, <laughs> it's, it's so insulting. To the, like, yes, make sure you is. wire it to my Swiss bank account. Like, <laughs> why? Yeah, because they realized, like, like where are they? One, it's not Bison dollars. So what's yeah. it going to be worth? What's it going to be worth when he dominates the earth? Yeah. Uh, but you, like, where are they going to have him, like, get a wire transfer? It's always a Swiss bank account. And always, or, yeah, or offshore or whatever. But, like, it's, it's yeah, insulting. Right, yeah, yeah. It's insulting to the audience because, like, we don't, don't you think we already know that? We've seen enough of these movies. We're the type of person to watch this type of movie. Like, yeah. you could have just said, where's the money? Like, you could have just chopped that whole, like, mention of it out. It's very, very true. This movie didn't care about your, um, level of intelligence. They probably yeah. assumed that you aren't too smart if you're watching it, which is bullshit because a lot of gamers are very smart. Yes. And a lot of the gamers are going to watch your movie. Yeah. Um number eleven, and this is one we mentioned on a number of movies already, but the okay. stormtrooper trope. Yeah. So the M Bison guys shoot and they might as well I don't know if the um helmet that they're wearing, like the black shades are actually just black and they can't see anything, but they're shooting yeah. wildly in every direction. They they don't hit a single person. Yeah, and that's to add to that, it's um the whole like running by a hail of bullets. Yeah. It's, yeah, okay. So let's make that another one. Yeah, just because like you're right. Because Guile should have been fucking riddled with lead by the, by the end of that scene. Like with all that metal, like you're you're, you're telling me not a single ricochet would have ping was like knock him in the oh, arm yeah. or graze him oh, or anything. No doubt about it. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll add that on in the end there. Um, number 12, when you land on a, an electrical panel, apparently you get electrocuted to death. Yeah. So, like, he lands, like, Bison lands on his, uh, control center. Yeah. And, and some, for some reason, his body weight, I guess, was enough to short circuit the yeah. panel, but also expose some kind of wiring or something that was attached to his clothes somehow. So it, yeah, because the suit was, mechanical in some way i don't know but yeah like, just landing on electrical equipment in bad movies um yeah. you get electrocuted to death yeah like if i were to pass out on top of my laptop right now i'm not gonna die <laughs> i i don't think so 
have you have you done that? Have you passed down on your laptop? Uh, not in recent years, but it's 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 happened. Okay, I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I just thought it'd be a funny little tidbit. Um, okay, the, the of course this is a zero hour self destruction. Yeah, has every movie had one? Uh, let's see. Armageddon had one. Yeah, w- Wicker Man didn't. I mean, there was a countdown, but it wasn't like they didn't like show the clock. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no zero hour. Yeah, what was the third uh, Water movie? Waterworld. Water yeah, it did. Yeah. The and cage. then over the top did because he had lost one arm wrestling match out of the two double eliminations. Uh, so he had to, he had no choice but to win that one. So yeah. like we kind of sort of counted that as zero hour. Same kind of tension build. Yeah. Uh, so we'll say three out of the four so far. Four out of five with this one. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah. Four out of five. Yep. Okay. Um, number fourteen. Uh, Guile actually survived at the end after you thought he died. It's like the Indiana yeah. Jones like drives the tank off a cliff, but he actually caught himself. And yeah. When everybody thinks he's dead, Indy shows back up. So same, yeah. same deal here. Uh, number 15 uh, at the very end, that Easter egg, when Bison's hand comes shooting out of the debris that I, yeah. I decided to also use for the fight script for the fallen SG championship. Okay. Um, that is something you see all the time. Yep. Yeah. And then you mentioned the not being riddled by bullets as you're running full speed, like like running really fast, like helps you escape or something. Yeah, and they're shooting like forty caliber bullets at you. Yeah. Um. So sixteen tropes. Okay. Holy hell! <laughs> this is a fucking bad movie. This movie fucking sucks, dude. Like, like I said, I had to like I had to watch it like a second time to just get the, the B stories and the C stories straight, just because it was just it, too much going on. Confusing, stupid. Yeah. Um, okay, so that that about does it for test number six. Let's move on to test number seven. Okay. This one's called bad effects, side effects. Okay. Uh, so this is a simple test idea, but it has a complex and accurate structure. Okay. So uh, we grade movies on computer graphics and practical effects um, on our custom scale. Mm-hmm. So uh, bad CGI, like really, really bad CGI, we call yeah. it deep blue. In reference to Deep Blue Sea, because the sharks are just unforgivable. Yeah. Uh, slightly better than that is Total Recall. This tends to be more of a practical effect. Yeah. Um, uh, where claymation crap looks terrible. I will mention mm-hmm. again, because I do every week, that Total Recall is actually a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, better still, a rock scorpion, uh, a reference to the infamous Dwayne Johnson appears as a half scorpion, half human. Yeah. God or whatever in the mummy returns. Very bad. Um, mm-hmm. but it's still 2000 graphics. So it looks okay. Yeah. Um, and then the best of the bad would be a Beowulf. And this was the okay. movie that came out, I don't know, like a decade ago. And, um, it is Beowulf completely CGI. So the whole story mm-hmm. is CGI. There's no live action. There's no cartoon. Nothing. It's just CGI through and through. And it looks eerily real. Yeah. But you can tell it isn't. Okay. So that's, that would be our best score. So, uh, let's get into it and we'll see, see, uh, what we, what shakes out here on test number seven, bad effects, side effects. Okay. Okay. Um, number one, the news picture in picture, like right in the beginning. Yeah. Looks uh, total recall at best to me, and I will uh, take it a deep blue if you want. Um, can we do a deep recall? Yeah, why not? Yeah, Pretty because deep. like it, I was thinking total recall for like a lot of the things in this movie, but that, that one it looked like a um, like if you were like a graphics design student and you were doing like your like your freshman year project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like bottom of the barrel but yeah just a step above yeah number two the missile truck destroying the building i wrote as rock scorpion okay fair look looked pretty pretty believable yeah um i don't know if they made any dummies like explode like any any of the people that he ran over i didn't catch any of that like odds uh, are odds are he they did drive a truck through a thing but the thing was probably a facade like, it, yeah, wasn't, like, it wasn't like a over the top where I think he actually drove through a gate. I think it was yeah, probably a lot it. of like particle board and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Foam and particle board and yeah. water and stuff like that. Um, number three. Okay. This drove me crazy. Okay. 
Uh, you know, they did a close up on the snake tattoos. Yeah. Those were Sharpies. Yeah. Like, so obviously Sharpie, that's a deep blue. It wasn't even henna. They could have done a henna tattoo no. or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it was, it, that was insulting. Yeah. Uh, number four, the satellite truck graphics, also deep blue. Yeah. Really bad. Um, okay, number five, you mentioned this. Uh, ketchup packets on cardboard. Yes. That's, that's pathetic. Yeah. Also deep blue. So you see where this is going. Mm hmm. Um, I actually thought the explosions were rock scorpion, like the building and stuff. I think they did blow yeah. some stat up, you know? Yeah. So, um, Blanca looks fucking stupid. Mm hmm. So, uh, I went with recall. Okay. Uh, Swiss bank account, when they show it, it just yeah. says like, like dollar bill zero dot zero zero. That's deep blue. Just looks like total shit. Not necessary. It reminded me of, um, like that role playing game that Tom Hanks's character played when he was a kid. And like, um, it was, it was like Dungeons and Dragons, like on the computer from like the eighties. And they're like typing yeah, in your actions. Yeah. yeah. That's what it okay, reminded yeah. me of. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. Um, okay. So the, ne the next one I had here was Bison's, uh, life support suit and yeah. the, em the emperor's electricity that came out. <laughs> uh, Total Recall. You mentioned that too. That's funny. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we were just pissed off by the same bullshit. Well, I mean, like, he was wearing just like one of those like puffy coats you see like chicks wearing during the winter that like go all the way down to their feet. It was yeah. like that, that material. And then like someone had like an air pump off frame and they were just like filling it with air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, really stupid. Um, and then lastly, um, Bison was so obviously on a wire. Yeah. Like, when he flew, he only flew directly at him and on, like, a pendulum sort of <laughs> swing. So, yeah, and, um, that was Deep Blue as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, upon reflection, we have um, a Deep Recall, a Rock Scorpion, a Deep Blue, a Deep Blue, a Deep Blue, a Rock Scorpion, a Recall, a Deep Blue, a Total re a Recall again, and a Deep Blue. So, I'm thinking this is a, a Deep Recall, if you'll allow it. And that's being generous. I think, yeah, I think the recall is generous. Cause if we went with majority rule, it'd be deep blue. But yeah, I just give him, give him a fighting chance. Yeah. Cause I, I don't want this to be the worst movie ever made forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, man. So we'll do uh logical consistency inconsistencies and then we'll get into your review. Cool. Uh, we'll go over bad credit names, compare these movies. Then okay. we'll talk about what we're going to watch next week. And, Sounds and we're good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so is Chung Lee a reporter? Um, did she, Honda and Balrog all learn how to run a news truck, uh, in order to get close to Bison? Cause they're all yeah. actually fighters with vendettas, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh, Guile wants to, um, yeah, so Guile wants to low down on Ken and Ryu at the prison, right? Yeah. And Sawada, um, just happens to have their files in his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> oh, two folders. Uh, right. <laughs> bang, bang. That's Ken and Ryu. Um, okay, Vega made his claws, um, like the the claws with like little hooks on the end, looks like dinosaur bones. Yeah, out of bamboo mm -hmm. while he was in prison. Yeah, like they're in the prison yard for a half a day, and he's got these like makeshift bamboo claws with dinosaur claws on it. So. That was like their equivalent of like making a shank out of the toothbrush for him. It was just a quick makeshift <laughs> yeah. weapon for jail. Yeah, somehow I. How the hell he did that, I'll never know. But, um, hey, why, why did they, uh, why didn't they just wait until the truck was like a mile down the road before they tried the escape attempt instead of trying to escape in front of all the guards? It would have been a lot less guns if they did that. Yep. That's yeah. true. Um, were the medics in on the fake death scheme? <laughs> because they come rushing over and declare, uh, Guile dead. Yeah, they declared him dead. They checked his pulse and declared him dead. So they had to have been in on it. But I don't yeah. think they were in on it. But they definitely weren't in on it. Uh, yeah. Also, did Ken have to precisely shoot those ketchup packets because he didn't have a fake gun? Yeah, it's reminding me of um, it's reminding me of uh, Dumb and Dumber when they're like, "What if they shot me in the head? Huh? What if they did shoot us in the head?" <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. like, what? That was a risk we had to take. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So Ken was very accurate, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um. So. 
I, I, all of a sudden they know the location of Bison's hideout. Yeah. They don't explain how. No one knows where he's at. And then the half of the movie passes and they figure that's enough time for you to forget that no one knows where he's at. So. Yeah. Um, Ken and Ryu memorized each half of a map coincidentally. Do you remember that? I got the left side. I got the right side. Yeah, but yeah. They, they had already done it. So they didn't agree to do it. They just happened to memorize opposite ends of the map. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, all right. So, all right. This is probably my favorite part, but, um, okay. The, the stealth boat that goes invisible. Yeah. Parts water on both sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when the invisible boat is going down the river and yeah. you check the camera to see if there's any boats coming down the river, you can't see a boat, but you can see the water being parted yeah. as if a boat is coming at you high, at high speed. Yes. So um love that. Just love that. Also, yeah. uh Bison has an arcade council for his river mines. I actually um I wanted to float that by because I noticed that too. Do you think that was like Capcom's way of paying homage to the actual game? Like, do you think if it zoomed out, Absolutely. it was actually actually a Street Fighter box he was hitting? Yes, on? I, I, yes, I really do. Yeah, um, I think that Capcom. I, I actually read that Capcom had like a lot of power, okay. so they they um had to give the okay on everything. Okay, and they had a lot of ideas about set design and stuff like that. It seems so. I bet yeah. you that was a nod to themselves because they. The reason that they um, had so much sway is because they put up like twenty five million of the thirty five. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Um. So, why is Balrog wearing gloves all of a sudden? Where did he get them? Yeah, that's a good point. He's wearing boxing gloves. Yeah. Uh, why is Honda Hawaiian if he's Japanese? Pearl Harbor. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> uh, Bison can fly. Why does he need a flying command center if he can fly? I don't think he could fly until after he was resuscitated. So it went into like emergency flight mode? I guess because all the electricity or something. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I mean, don't, don't <laughs> uh, take so anything I say flight, seriously. After flight, yeah. then flight. I guess yeah. that's the, the human, the human way. Yeah. Uh, by the end, and I kind of mentioned this already, but by the end, everyone is in video game attire. Mm-hmm. Somehow they all yeah. found a way to look like they do in the video. Yeah. Why not just make them look like they do in the video game and then shoot the movie? That's probably a smart idea. Yeah. Um, so was Blanca the plan all along? Because it, he seemed like a, uh, hey, why don't we just throw some chemicals in this guy that pissed off, us off because he's Skyle's friend? Um, because I, I'm wondering because Bison's plan is to execute hostages until he gets the money that he's going to use to dominate the world somehow. Yeah. Um, and his plan to execute the hostages is to blow up his own fortress. Mm-hmm. So he's giving 72 hours. So he, he doesn't have a nuke or anything. The threat to the world is that he's going to take the hostages in Chandelou and kill them all unless he gets 20 billion dollars, which I don't think the government would give you 20 billion because you have hostages. Yeah. Um, and the side story was like, well, if that doesn't work, then my plan B is to make super soldiers out of some guy. I'm just going to grab out of my hostages and I'm going to yeah. see if I can make it, you know, it was like, which is it? Yeah. Is it was Blanca? Like, I mean, his company makes anabolic, uh, pathog- I, I don't even remember what they were called steroids basically yeah. and genetically modified DNA mutagens or whatever. So yeah. Uh, maybe it was the plan, but that's not the plan that he espouses. Yeah. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> is Guile American? Um, he's got a lot of USA flags on him in like mm. American regalia, if you will. Um, yeah, but he, has several accents throughout the movie. So he I, does. I think he's supposed to be. Uh, we don't know, by the way, what the Allied Nations are. Yeah. Uh, so there are 15 only... of them, though. Oh, okay. Well, that's a start. Yeah. Uh, where is Chandelou? Uh, somewhere in East Asia. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That's it. That's my logical <laughs> system. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. Why don't you give us uh, your movie review? All right. And this is all true. Um, one time I was riding my bicycle to Starbucks on a busy street that led to more residential streets. I saw a chihuahua run out from one of the cul-de-sacs and into traffic. I reached out to grab him, but I was too far off and didn't want to ride to traffic myself. The dog ran in front of an SUV and let out a yelp from another world as his right leg was smashed out of the socket before hobbling home on three legs and a stump. I followed the dog home and told the owners that they shouldn't let their dog run out like that, and they seemed unconcerned as they tossed him into their SUV and drove to the vet. It was one of the worst things I've ever witnessed until I watched Street Fighter. (laughs) I was wondering where you were going with that, and now I see. Uh, Okay, stellar review. Uh, That uh, that might as well have been an, an Ebert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well done, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let's get into the bad credit names. Okay. I love this. Um, so I have a bunch. Uh, number one, and this is personal. So okay. I made it number one. Matt Slattery. We know him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Matt. How you doing? I hope you're listening. Hey. Um, Probably not him because I don't think he was on the crew of Street Fighter when he was <laughs> six in yeah, Taiwan. Yeah, six or eight. <laughs> um, two, Reg Garside. Okay. T- kind of cool. Yeah. Number three, Gregory Shimp. <laughs> I like it. Uh, number four, Jules Worm. <laughs> uh, number five, Ephemius. Kalos. That's actually a cool name. I like that name. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Number six, Beverly Penis. (laughs) 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 Okay. Um, Okay. I, that's not exactly true. It's P I N N A S. Okay. So it's probably Panas. Panas. Okay. But penis is better. It's funnier. I got a better laugh out of you. Uh, but that's why it's only number six. Could you imagine your name being Beverly Penis? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Stang Khaki. Stang Khaki. Stang. Yeah. All right. Uh, number eight, Larry Sandy. Ew. The double Y. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, not good. Nine, Zoltan. Just a one name? A one name name? <laughs> yeah. We're back to one namers. Once again, that's weird because I mentioned Big with Tom Hanks as a reference, and isn't there a Zoltan machine? Oh my god, I think you're right. Wow, dude, that's crazy, spooky, very. Uh, number ten, I've got uh, fourteen. By the way, okay, here's number ten. Paul, salty dog, Brin cat. <laughs> In quotes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number eleven, Boo Slattery. Huh. Maybe B-O- Matt's brother or sister. B O O or B E A U. B O O. Like wow. ooh, spooky. Yeah. Spooky again. Uh number twelve. Gallon. Buffy. Good pastor. Hmm. That's not a name. No. That's a bunch of things put together. <laughs> yes, it is. Number thirteen. Tipawan Mamamini. <laughs> <laughs> A Tipawan Mamani. 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 Tipawan Mamani. And lastly, mm-hmm. number 14. Grand L. Bush. Grand L. Bush. That's <laughs> yeah. one of the better ones we've heard so far, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it doesn't have a, a huge punch, but if you break it down, uh, it's yeah. in, it insinuates that you are something. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's it. Let's do the comp- uh, comparison between the two movies, and sure. uh, we will then talk about what we're going to get into for ne- next week, so, and, and then any announcements you might have. Okay. Um, so we ditched the botch watch as a test, so we're not going to go into that um, until mm-hmm. next week because we have the Keystone apparatus score of a negative nineteen percent for Street Fighter, uh, okay. but we're not going to count that against Waterworld. All right. Plot pitch. Um, a three and a half star, 27 for Waterworld. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, 
That's kind of a lot of seconds, but it's pretty good. Pretty good yeah. star rating. You gave it a two, Street Fighter. Yeah. And it was 36 seconds past our 10 second standard. <laughs> okay. Uh, so tick one off for Street Fighter. Yeah. Indefensible dialogue counter. Uh, six for Waterworld. Okay. 14 for Street Fighter. This movie really did fucking suck. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's so many lines I could have put in there that I did. Yeah. Uh, the emotometer overspill. Waterworld, um, had a 22. I think it was Helen. Okay. Uh, and Bison gave us a 27 here. So another, take, a, take another box. Poor taste detector. This, uh, Waterworld's trying. They're trying here. Yeah. 10. Score of 10. Okay. Three fighter says, nah. I'm not having that. They got an 11. Okay. Tropes. Waterworld was our tropiest movie to date. Yeah. Street Fighter wipes the floor with a 16. Okay. Bad effects. Waterworlds were pretty good. We gave it a Rock Scorpion. Yeah. It's pretty good score. Street Fighter got a goddamn deep recall. A deep recall. Street Fighter won every single category and is now very clearly the worst movie ever made. And good God, who is going to fight back? They earned it, man. They earned they it. They did. They did. And I wanted to mention that Bison is our new full-on ass cheek champion. Okay. So next week, whoever it is, um, it's going to have to be someone from Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Uh. That is, I have you seen Suicide Squad? Is that Marvel or DC? It's DC. I haven't seen anything in the Marvel universe at all. Period. And I wow. only in DC, I've only seen Man of Steel. Okay, so I've not seen Suicide Squad. Um, well, you're in for not a treat at all because it's terrible. I know Jared it's Leto really acts weird. like a fucking dick, right, the entire time. Uh, he, yeah, he's he's bad. He's very okay. bad. I I don't know if it's his fault. Um, but I don't have a whole lot of experience with, uh, Leto. I, I like, yeah. uh, Fight Club, but he's a very minor role in Fight Club. Yeah. Um, and from what I can tell in this movie, uh, he is overrated because Suicide okay. Squad, uh, you'll see. It's, okay. It's atrocious. It, I, um, I'll be surprised to see it beat out Street Fighter, but I did really hate it. Okay. Um, Street Fighter at least had that camp to it that, that I kind of enjoyed. And I think you'll find that suicide squad. I'm not going to be as jolly. Okay. In my review. Um, so, so we'll see what you think of it. I'm excited for you to see it for the first time. Okay. Uh, and do you have anything that you want to announce or say, or, uh, yes. So as you know, we are on anchor FM and Spotify. Um, we also got on pocket cast, Google podcasts. Um, uh, I'm working on iTunes. And cool. I am working on YouTube. So we yeah. will be available in a lot of places. Uh, some of it I, I have to do manually just because just this is the way the cookie crumbles right now. But yeah, we are, we are getting more, we are getting more audible as the weeks progress. So I'll keep announcing what platforms we're getting on. And, uh, as, as always, feel free to email us at bombfilterpodcast at gmail.com. And Chris, we have an Instagram as well too right now, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, the bomb filter, uh, podcast on Instagram. Okay. Um, please, uh, like our shit and follow us because that's good for us. And yes. we want to keep making these for you. I'm not going to stop. I will really never stop. It. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, this has been the bomb filter. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.